Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Pop Dust Presents. Today, uh, very happy to have Kirsten Marilyn. What is <laughs> Hi, up? what's up? Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a while since we caught up. Yeah. Uh, but you have, a, you have a new song out now called Legacy. Mm-hmm. We should definitely chat about that. I'm interested in a lot of things. You know, the song, where it came from, uh, also the artwork. I want I want to know about and okay. uh, and sort of the, and sort of the messages behind it. But before we get into that, we should disclose to the audience um, the legacy of our friendship. Okay, we we've probably known each other for almost six years now. After yeah. meeting, probably was it the Fat Baby Show in the Lower East Side? Yep, that, that is was a- an epic. That was an epic performance. God damn, I missed doing shows all the time I there know. was a time where we were all doing shows like every all week. the time it like, hey. yeah it's like yo it's the weekend are you playing a show are you playing a show like whose show are we going to this weekend or like you know and man like the, all the Brooklyn wildlife stuff I miss it yeah all right so we met like five six years ago doing shows yeah um you had a feature on the first EP like real body of work that I ever put out which was uh I co-written with Decent another Pop Dust Presents host um and yeah so we've done shows together um I've always really been into your music I remember one time I got to play guitar during one of uh one of your songs like one of my favorite tracks of yours bringing us up to the present day with your new track um Let's talk about the single, because I can say, having known your work for so long, kind of a different sound. It's a very different sound because I was working, I'm working with a different producer. His name is Adam Tilzer. Um, This is, it's very much an Adam Tilzer production, but it also is, I feel like it's very representative of me, whereas the stuff that I had created before, um, it was more representative of the producers that I was working with. Um, whereas like Adam and I, it was a very collaborative, uh, experience, I guess, for lack of a better. So I always, when I write, um, I, I don't tend to play too much when I, when I write, cause I only like dabble in instruments. So it's easier for me to just like write the lyrics and write the melody without anything. And then if I want to put something minimal behind it to like take to the producer and be like, this is kind of where I'm thinking this would go. But generally I'm just writing lyrics and melodies like the top line. And then I take that to the producer, which is what I've always done. But you know, I I actually got to like sit in and say, this is, this is the feel that I want for this. And, and you know, anything that like that he would do that I didn't like, I was very allowed to, you know, veto. Whereas with other producers, I didn't have as much veto power, which seems weird since I'm the artist and you would think like, you know, it's, it's my song and I should have the final say when I, you know, I, I write a lot uh, doing when I'm doing very mundane things, I write. So um, I write a lot in the shower. Uh, this was not a shower song, though. I wrote this one um, between washing dishes and driving the car. And nice. I just started singing those first two lines, like legacy and tradition, uh, because I was thinking about those words and like, and actually, I think culture. It was like legacy, tradition, culture, and I was trying to think about those words and and the definitions of them, but yet what they mean to me and how I feel like we inflate these things in our society and like in our own minds to be something that, you know, it's all in our imagination. Like they don't have to be what they are. So like when someone says like, oh, I'm worried about my legacy and what I'm leaving behind, I'm always kind of like, why though? Like, what is it? what does it matter? Like you're dead. You're not going to reap the (laughs) rewards of the things that you leave behind. And in a hundred years, you know, people won't even, people won't know you. They might know like the things you did, but they won't know the essence of you. And I think about it more in terms of like people like the Koch brothers and, you know, really rich people that are like my legacy. What am I, you know, what am I leaving behind? And it's like, why it, it shouldn't matter. Like, how you treat other human beings should be the most important thing and, and how, you know, and making sure that everyone is living 
a peaceful and happy life should be the most important thing, but people, people get tripped up in their own legacy and their own traditions and their own culture. And I think it's just kind of a detriment to society when, um, you know, we're, we're only thinking about ourselves and then we're only thinking about, you know, how things affect us and, and the different things that we believe in, like how they divide us. Yeah. Um, it seems like a, a meeting between, you know, just pure ego and then like societal expectations. Yeah. First of all, like it's so important for, for you to make sure that you are like known and famous and in the history books. And then the way in which you get there also needs to reflect what society values at the time. Like, yeah, I was super rich, like, you know, or whatever. Um, Tell me about the the sample at the beginning and end of the song. My producer sent me just as like a funny, like we had no intention of using it, but it just is like this funny video. And it was, it had gone viral because the caption of it was like, I don't know what he's saying, but I agree with him. And it's just, I think he's German and he's interviewing uh, other teen, he's a teenage kid and he's like interviewing these other teenagers and he's just so over the top. He's like asking these girls like, you know, do you have a boyfriend or whatever? And the girl's like, of course I have a boyfriend. Look at me. But it's all, you know, it's all a joke. And and then at the very end of the first clip, he said, you know, he's like, ra ta ta ta. And like, I don't know. You have to like find this video. It's hilarious. And then I don't know. We we're just like, what if we sampled this? Like, I don't That's know. Awesome. I, I have no idea why we thought to like put it in the song, but I think it works perfectly. And yeah, in the video, if you watch the video, I mean, this kid has like, a ton of like TikTok followers and but it's all in German so if you don't speak German you wouldn't understand it which we didn't but <laughs> anybody watching that can speak German sound off in the comments below tell us what this guy was talking about and link us to it so I can watch it because uh I gotta see what all the hype is about uh, yeah I it definitely that was a really fun opener and closer to the to the track Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's hilarious. And uh, I forget his name, but my producer is like, do you think he'll ever catch wind that we used him as a sample in our song? And I was like, I don't know, maybe one day. <laughs> Hopefully he'll enjoy well, it. <laughs> you should just make sure that he sees it. Like, just reach out to him. Hit him up You're on right. TikTok and be like, by the way, maybe you can do a Zoom interview with him. Maybe he can take my job. I see what's happening here. Oh, my God. <laughs> this. Wow. That was slick. Way to outsource my job to the Germans. Oh. Because he's too charismatic, and I don't, I don't even speak any other languages. He's pretty good at interviewing. <laughs> 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 okay, thanks. Now we can talk about uh, the cover art. It looks to me like almost like a campaign photo. So mm -hmm. the, the full title of the album is There Are No Cats in America. And uh, as I was sort of troubleshooting what I thought the cover would look like based on that title, um, I was like, do we, just, do we just put me like in a regal chair with a bunch of cats around me? Is it just a cover with a ton of cats? And then I remembered that uh, photo of Bernie Sanders that had been photoshopped. It was, it's a guy in a sweater with a cat and then somebody put Bernie Sanders face on it and then had like Bernie Sanders logo next to it. Um, so I was like, I want to match this as much as possible um, without totally ripping it off. Yeah. So it's, not exactly a campaign photo, but the logo is meant to be an homage to Bernie Sanders' logo. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we totally ripped, we totally ripped that off, and hopefully they won't come after me for that. For that, we tried to make it a little different. All the eyes, instead of being stars, are cats' faces. Yeah. Maybe they'll and steal that idea the next time Bernie runs. Bernie twenty twenty four. I've been oof. saying it. Was he going to be like 80? But that's like the new 30. <laughs> you know, I have a black cat and black cats don't tend to show up well in photos. And also my cat hates having his photo taken. He knows that a photo he, is occurring. Yeah. I, as soon as you put the camera in front of him, he's like, nope. So, and my friend's cat, his name is Trouble. 
and you can see he's got like one lazy eye in the photo and he's just so cute and so i asked her trouble or she, trouble 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 okay so i asked her if she wouldn't cool. mind if we use trouble in the photo and she said of course it all it all worked out so that is the cover story well you heard it here first people that is not her actual cat that is a decoy cat she's a fraud <laughs> And don't vote for her. Okay, the title the title of the album, There Are No Cats in America. What are you talking about? I get this question way more than I thought I would. I thought everyone was going to know what I was talking about. So okay. in the movie, The American Tale. I thought you were going to say cats. And I was no. like, <laughs> I was like no. no. No, no. Not the movie cat. <laughs> In the movie The American Tale, there is a scene where all the So I don't do you know this film? I do not. Okay. But I'm guessing that tale is like a pun. It is. It's T A I L. Okay. <laughs> yeah, American Tale. The main character is a mouse called named Fievel. Fievel Mouskowitz. And the Mouskowitzes live in Russia. And they are terrorized. It might even be like Belarus. I'm not really sure. But so it's like the 1800s and they're being terrorized by these cats. And so they have to leave home and they, they find themselves on a ship on their way to America. And the father has been told these stories that there are no cats in America. So they get on the ship. And they're in the ship and they they meet all these other little um, immigrant mice and each little mouse has their own tale of the cats in their home country. And then the chorus is like, but there are no cats in America. So, and they all sing this chorus together that there are no cats in America and the streets are made of cheese. And what immigrants were sold uh, at the time is that America was this prosperous place where you could pursue anything you wanted to pursue and you could become anything you wanted to become. And the streets were paved with gold. And I had read this article um, that was talking about how what America actually did was like steal uh, every other country's workforce so that we could become the strongest country in the world and every other country would suffer because of it. Not a lot. I have, I have a few songs on the album that are a little like, you know, a little kind of pokey at the United States. So I just felt, you know, I'm being the daughter of an immigrant. I, I felt that that title based on what I was writing about and who I am was very apropos to, to kind of encompass all the songs on the album. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, no, I had no idea. And also I love cats and I'm glad that cats exist in America. So I was like, how great is it that I have the word cats in the title of my album? That is, yeah. I mean, the cats part, because I know that you're an animal lover. That made sense yeah. to me. I did not know the co connection to the movie um, about the Russian mice. I did not realize that you were colluding with Russia. Is that, that's what I'm trying <laughs> to say. Okay. I just didn't know. I, do you sample the song from the movie in the album no. at all? No, we don't. We don't sample it at all. Plus, it's a lot harder to get things approved when you have samples. Yeah, like, you know what I do is I just don't get it approved. <laughs> well, I'm already, so I'm far, waiting. So good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting because uh, we have two cover songs on the album and it still hasn't, I still haven't gotten like the licensing. Distro How does that Kid, even work? Do you like call up? Through the distributor, they deal with the licensing. So technically the album like isn't fully approved yet because we're still waiting on the wow. distributor to get the licensing for the two songs that I did. And one of them is a Nirvana idea. song, so I'm a little worried. Uh, Nirvana, if you're watching. Courtney, it would be uh, Courtney Love. She has all the, uh, yeah. she has all the power there. Courtney Love, big fan of the show. Courtney, make it happen. Please. Um, Courtney, uh, Celebrity Skin by Hole. Great record. So good. In my makeup. You should cover that. I challenge you. Oh my this God. is a Courtney Love challenge. I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> the Courtney Love challenge on TikTok. All right. <laughs> Do your best whole cover. Oh my that, God. Dude, let's get this whole Courtney Love challenge thing started off. Uh, sound off in the comments. <laughs> Hashtag Courtney Love challenge. When does the album come out? The full album comes out on October 23rd. October 23rd. Yeah. So. Full week before Halloween. 
It is. Yeah, we didn't want to we didn't want to conflict with people's trick or treating plans. They canceled it in LA. Halloween is canceled. Oh, is it canceled? Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's canceled here too. I don't know. Yeah. Oh my god, I just remembered I had a dream last night where people were trick or treat. What? Why would I That's a That was a weird dream and it just all came back to me. Wow. Hey, so if you're just tuning in, I'm telling Kirsten <laughs> Marilyn about a spooky dream I had. <laughs> I was going to say, and a lot of the time between when we first met each other and worked together a bit um, and today, uh, definitely from, you know, me following you on social media and stuff, I think it would be fair to call you like an activist, right? Like there's that a lot would... of causes that you feel very passionate about. Yeah, um, that would be and fair. You're very vocal about. Yeah. And, and it seems like the album you said does get a little like political and stuff are there is there messages are there things or causes that you want to give a shout out to or you feel like people should know about you it might help them uh connect with the music i am vegan <laughs> and i i'm either gonna like gain a bunch of fans by saying that or lose a bunch um depending on where they're watching from but uh yeah i'm i'm vegan and i am i would consider myself like a vegan activist uh i'm also a, a human rights activist as well you know social justice warrior whatever you want to call that i hate that term but yeah so on the on the album there are four or five songs that definitely have a vegan theme but it's not like overt smacking you in the face like hey i'm vegan you know um, actually, no, I lied. There is one hip hop track. <laughs> you forgot about is... track six. Hey, I I'm know. Vegan. Actually, I keep, <laughs> I keep ah. forgetting. I don't know. I keep forgetting about this track. It's a, uh, it is, a, it's a hip hop track. I'm only singing the chorus on it. Um, and then there are four different MCs that um, that wrote and recorded for it. And it's about this law called the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act where it basically says that if you um if you destroy private property in order to like rescue animals it's it's it was created mostly for animals that have been tested on because the ALF uh they started out really like rescuing animals from testing facilities and then they would smash all the like computers and destroy files and destroy all the research that had been done um but as we know, destruction of private property or destruction of property is not violence, uh, you know. Yeah. So, but through those acts or, or through um, those, I guess, acts of protest, they wrote into law this, uh, this law that says that animal activists who do things like that are considered domestic terrorists. And through that law, you can get decades of jail time for attempting to rescue like puppies from a facility where they're testing on you know beagles or something when you end up in prison and they're like what are you in here for you're gonna be like rescuing puppies yeah you know yeah you can't even (laughs) seem tough in prison it's a lose-lose situation it really is it really is but it just goes you know it just goes to show um if you want, there's a there's a documentary on. I think it's on Netflix now. It started off on Amazon, maybe, but I think it is on Netflix, and it's called uh, Animal People, and it's all about this group that uh, was trying to rescue animal. They they were trying to shut down this facility, and um, they kept getting the the donors to stop donating to this research facility, but then some other donor would like swoop in, some other corporation would swoop in and save them. Um, So it always seemed like they were winning and then they would lose like right at the 11th hour because somebody else would come in and continue the funding for this, you know, research. Um, You know, and we, it's, it's been shown that um, 90, it's something like 96% of animal tests fail in the first human trial anyway. So it's not really like animal testing is kind of a, it, 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 it doesn't work. So yeah. we should just stop doing it. But if you watch animal people, they talk about this law and, and they talk about how they put some of these people away who weren't even involved in the actual act of destroying property. They were just vocal. They were the ones who were vocal about it. So that's how, you know, they were the ones that got put away for being vocal about it. So then it's like, 
can you not even be vocal about this stuff? Like, are you, are we getting our freedom of speech taken away from us because of this act as well? So there are a few, uh, vegan themed tracks on there. That is definitely the most overt one. The other ones are a little more, you'd have to know that that that's what it's about to understand yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then the other, yeah. And then there's, there's my feminist rant song where I just like, am screaming, to the world. <laughs> I'm not even singing. Yeah. I'm literally just like shouting about feminism. <laughs> There's nothing that people like more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're going to love it. Vegan shouting about feminism. They're going to love it. <laughs> um, no, I think that's awesome. I think it's important for people with the platform to be saying things. I tend to like music that has a meaning and that uh, gets political. But all right, October 23rd. There are no cats in America. The full length album, the LP, as yeah. those of us in the industry would say. Yeah. Very exciting. Uh, but single. you can listen to the single right now. Yep. And the single, uh, <laughs> Legacy, out now. Uh, Kirsten, Marilyn, everybody, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I really Absolutely. appreciate it.